The Am I OK podcast is part of the Practice of the Practice Network, a network of podcasts seeking to help you market and grow your business and yourself. To hear other podcasts like Faith Fringes, the Holistic Counseling Podcast, and Beta Male Revolution, go to the website www.practiceofthepractice.com forward slash network. Welcome to the Am I OK podcast, where you will discover that being highly sensitive is something to embrace, and it's actually a gift you bring to the world. We will learn together how to take ownership of your high sensitivity so you can make positive changes in your life, in the lives of others, and it's totally okay to feel this way. I'm your host, Lisa Lewis. I'm so glad you're here for the journey. Welcome to today's episode of the Am I OK podcast. I'm your host, Lisa Lewis. Today is the first of a series of episodes where I will be providing live consultations. This is a little different than a guest interview or a solo episode that you might be used to. On these episodes, I have a listener ask one big question they are needing help with around high sensitivity, whether it's for themselves or someone they know or anything else related to highly sensitive persons. And today I'm so excited to bring on my podcast, one of my listeners. His name is Sako Spruill. And Sako is a first year doctorate of physical therapy student at Azusa Pacific University in Los Angeles. He is a fitness coach and jiu jitsu purple belt. Sako inspires to treat and rehabilitate patients so they can achieve pain free movement and optimal physical and mental health. And he is also a chocolate and coffee connoisseur. And also, I want to put in there that Sako, I've known him for the last two or three years, and he is my personal trainer. And he's helped me rehabilitate my left shoulder injury. And now he's helping me rehabilitate my right shoulder injury. So hopefully that's the only the rehabilitation I need for the rest of my life. And I'm so welcome. Um, so happy to have you here, Sako, and welcome to the podcast. Well, thank you, Lisa. I'm I'm thrilled to be here. You know, I'm a fan of yours just as a human being, and I'm I'm a fan of your podcast. So um, I'm glad to be here. I'm excited to uh, you know see what we're uh, discussing today and and learn more about um, sensitivity. Uh, yes, you did. Uh, you gave me a great intro, and I am a coffee and chocolate connoisseur, <laughs> and and I love the coffee you brought me from uh, Costa Rica. That was fantastic. Thank you, by the way. Yeah, you're welcome. And maybe I can do a uh, uh, an episode just on um, food, chocolate, and coffee. And yes. See what, what, what that has to do with high sensitivity. Yeah, sounds good. <laughs> so I want to. I like to ask all my um, listeners or my guest interviewers if they consider themselves highly sensitive, and if so, if you could just share a little bit about your story and maybe how you know that or came out or came to find that out about it yeah i you know i was attracted to your podcast uh because of that and so i do consider myself uh sensitive actually and it's you know i guess that would be a little odd uh you know i'm kind of i guess you can call me a, a masculine type of person i guess you know i do a lot of combat sports and fitness training and i've got a big beard and but um you know kind of the stereotypical masculine male but yeah i think i'm sensitive um and just you know, I I think that's the case. Just just because uh, you know, I pay attention to uh, to what people think about me, and 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 sometimes you know, what what they say uh, affects me a lot through through different aspects of life. Um, mm -hmm. Just just uh, I'm sensitive um, by ways of just you know regular you know common five senses. You know, sight, smell, touch. Um, I was listening to one of your podcasts and you were talking a, a little bit about that. And I think I'm right with that. I, I, I pick up a lot of different smells and, and um, I'm really sensitive to loud noises. So yeah, things, things like that. Um, so mm -hmm. yeah, I would definitely consider myself sensitive if you will. Okay. All right. Well, thank you for sharing that and, and uh, being personal with us. And so I want to ask you, what is your, your big question that you would like um, answered today? Well, 
you know, I was thinking about this a lot and I, I, I deal with a lot of clients in, in fitness and I'll be dealing with a lot of patients in my future career in, in PT. And I was thinking about, you know, a few typical or, or important topics I can consider when I deal with you know, highly sensitive people, you know, coming from my personal sensitivity, I know what some of that would look like, but maybe I'm missing a few things here and there that you could shed light on. How would I, how would I approach like a very highly sensitive patient or, um, you know, a client that doesn't necessarily, you know, like my personality, because I could be a little, you know, loud and, and um, uh, animated sometimes, you know, maybe do, do I have to calm that down or, uh, when I'm dealing with uh, a sensitive person or things of that nature, what 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 do you think about that? Mm -hmm. So those are um, um, great questions, and let, let's see if we can um, just kind of like go through them one by one. And the first thing I was uh, really came into my mind is about you know clients that maybe show up and and they're sensitive, and you're maybe you're trying to, like to read them. Are they liking me? Are they not liking me? Are they liking my you know personality, my jokes? And you know, like for one thing, really with anyone, you don't want to like have to change your personality for anyone. You just want to really be um, comfortable with your, you know, with yourself. And that allows other people to uh, really get to know you and they can decide for themselves whether, you know, they, they like you or not like you, want to continue working with you or not. Sometimes uh, we have clients, even the clients that I work with, you know, maybe the first session, it's it's not a good fit and that's okay. And the the idea is that we want that person to um, be able to heal whatever way that is, mentally, physically, emotionally, spiritually, and be with the best uh, person that, that can help support them in, in those areas. So if there's a, um, I'm thinking about um, uh, as a, a fitness coach, you know, if, if um, sensitive people can be highly sensitive to pain and may ha may struggle uh, working with pain or, or pushing or trying to push themselves or needing to push themselves a little to the edge to, to gain, whether it's flexibility or um, strength or whatever it is that they're working on. So that's one thing to um, be aware of and maybe uh, asking people their pain level, what's their pain level tolerance? Um, how does that sound so far to you? Uh, I, I really like that. Actually, when you are when you were talking about that, I could really think about specific situations where that was the case, you know, and I, and I like what you said, you know, um, just be yourself, you know, as is, 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 uh, is easy as that sounds, you can be yourself. And if it doesn't fit, that's okay. Mm -hmm. um, and to just be maybe a little bit observant of those little things of, of the things like if they are highly sensitive to a painful experience, or if it's, if they're perceiving the pain a little bit higher than uh, uh, nor a normal person would for say, but yeah, I, I really can uh, relate to all that. Mm -hmm. And also uh, highly sensitive people can be um, really sensitive to touch and not necessarily that you have to touch um, your client, you know, in, um, whether it's, well, PT, um, most likely, um, maybe as, as a fitness coach or a personal trainer, you don't necessarily have to put hands on and, you know, asking, um, clients is, is it okay if I touch you or, you know, is this, is this pressure? Okay. And just kind of giving them a heads up beforehand. So they, so they feel that they are, you know, in control of the situation too. I like that too. I like giving them that uh, opportunity to understand what's coming ahead of them, so they're not surprised by a touch or by a certain movement that you're requiring. That's that's great too. And what I'm getting out of what you're saying too is just be very fluid in your approach, and you know, uh, not so stern in, in your ways, but maybe have some room to back off uh, if, if if need be, or or pr maybe mm -hmm. even press a little more. So yeah, yeah, I'm getting and that. I also like to be mindful, just to be really re respectful of people's. Um, um, you know, of their, of their bodies, whether they like to be touched or not be touched. Is this pain tolerance? Is this pain okay? Or can we push a little bit more? And just also, you know, like educating them, giving them um, some 
um, information so they can also take it in for that information. And uh, also, I think it comes back to just being in control of the of the situation themselves and their progress, whether it's in you know PT or uh, fitness training or personal training. Yeah, that's great. And uh, what we, I'm sorry, I want to go back to the other questions that you had. And can you um, tell yeah. me again what you were asking? Well, I've, I have another question, and it was having to do with, um, you know, me personally, actually, coming from a sensitivity or a, being a highly sensitive person. You know, in what ways can I use that in, in, in my, to my own advantage? You know, for example, um, you know, in c- certain situations where I, I might feel, um, you know, uh, not uh, how I don't fit in or, or, or something, or, or I take offense to, um, the way an individual or a group is, is conducting themselves or, you know, things like that, where I just don't feel comfortable in a situation. Um, what are some advantages I can do being a sensitive person? Do I, you know, do I just, sometimes I feel like I just need to get out of the situation, but I know there's other Mm-hmm. you know, things I can, I can, other tools I can use. Mm-hmm. So one way um, to do that when you're entering a situation or a group um, is to uh, just uh, before you actually enter is put in your, in your mindset that um, the group, these, the people, maybe I don't, you know, even if I don't know them, they're going to accept me, they're going to accept me for who I am. So you're already starting off with a positive mindset. Because when we're sensitive, we can um, also pick up other um, um, energies or other people's energies and feel like um, I'm not liked, I'm not wanted here, and I want to like exit, I want to leave as soon as possible. So if we can just change that mindset uh, and just shift it a little bit to the more positive mindset of I am accepted, I am welcome here, I'm wanted here, and I want to stay here. And how does that sound to you? Um, I like that a lot, uh, and I think you actually touched on that on one of your podcasts. And I and I uh, I did a small um, practice of that, and it was effective, actually. And um, I want to build that. I want to build on that, and and see if I can, uh, you know, work that a little bit like a muscle, and just <laughs> mm-hmm. just kind of get it, uh, you know, a little bit normative for me because. Um, I liked it. I liked how I felt and, and how, um, and I use that very, very similar tactic. Just, just, you know, saying to myself, well, this is who I am. This is what you're going to get. Um, and, and, and just be comfortable with that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then also another, um, thing to think about or another technique is to, when we're entering situations that are maybe uncomfortable for us, we're uncertain, there's the unknown is that we want to be really grounded. And um, that can look different for everybody. So really being grounded, if you have a meditation practice, if you do a grounding practice, if that's um, uh, going outside, laying on the grass, just being in nature, just closing your eyes and just noticing the sensations in your body and seeing if you can connect your feet to the floor. I like to uh, use all the way to the earth. Also um, being... uh, physically active in your body can also help ground you um sensitive people sometimes uh firm pressures so using like proprioceptor uh exercises that we can really feel our body so we uh, it so if we feel our body then we can be in our body and that can feel really uh pleasant yeah, I agree. A lot of those uh, modalities we use in, in physical therapy too. They, they, you know, I was thinking of those when you were talking. Uh, things like heat and and uh, even even uh, uh, cryo and um, of course massage and all those things. They, they, those things come into mind when when you're talking about um, that those sensations and grounding. I'm, I, I I do that too. I appreciate that. Great. And can you tell me what uh, cryo is? Or for listeners that may not know, yeah, you know when we talk about cryo, we're basically we're cooling down. So um, you can use ice, uh, cool packs, cold water. Um, you know, some of there's some of those uh, boutiques around the neighborhood where you 
get into a cryo chamber and they take you down in this ridiculously Mm -hmm. cold temperature (laughs) and i've done that once it was pretty um exhilarating you know i'm not i like i'm a fan of heat so Mm -hmm. i like the sauna a little bit but uh the 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 cryo is great too you know we usually use that for more of an acute type of injury Mm -hmm. uh like an initial injury or 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 a a very uh, you know a very sharp pain but um uh we i I prefer i think heat would be a better option Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So heat or, or coolness. And I just, I want to go back to um, just what you're talking about is that, um, you know, wanting to be sensitive to like fitting in and as sensitive people, uh, we go about probably the majority of our day, we always have our feelers out there. So we're listening, we're looking we're with our eyes, just noticing what is really happening in our external environment because what's happening in our, in our external environment can really affect how we're feeling internally. So we really just want to be more mindful and really get to know our like, our own body and minds, how they're working together, so we can really uh, help ourselves in, in, despite what's going on externally. So I like to, um, just going back to that grounding meditation, uh, I like to use also a tree meditation where you are grounded grounding your tree roots like a tree into the earth, right? And if you think about a, a, your favorite tree in the whole world and how it's grounded, right? It has a big maybe a trunk, has a big span of leaves and branches. And then when a tree is in a windstorm or a snowstorm, a rainstorm, like it, all of that weather just goes through the tree, right? It doesn't, it doesn't get knocked over. Uh, and that's how we want to be as a person and being grounded. So it's whatever weather is happening externally in our environment that internally that we're okay. And that's coming back to like, I, I am okay. What a great analogy. That I love that. That tree is a great analogy. Yeah. Well, I, I hope this has been helpful for you. And I want to just um, ask you, what do you want to take away from our talk today, Sako? Well, uh, the same thing I've been taking away from from what you've been saying and from what I've been hearing um, you say is just, um, you know, tuning in a little bit, you know, being a little, you know, as sensitive as 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 I am, maybe maybe uh, even tuning in just a little bit more to others. okay, and picking up on. little cues maybe to adjust my practice or my treatment. Um, definitely looking within and uh, being almost acceptive to myself um, and just confident and happy with myself in, in, in different situations. And, um, and really that, you know, that, that grounding really sticks with me. Um, just being as solid as a tree. And you know, I picture this giant, beautiful tree, you know, by the way, I'm a fan of parks too. I don't know if I, you know, we talked about chocolate and coffee. I love parks. All right. <laughs> we'll add <laughs> and, that and, to the mix. <laughs> yeah. We could add that out of the national parks and city parks and, mm-hmm. you know, uh, and I love trees. So, you know, I pictured this giant big Oak, you know, and just, uh, you know, how it just sits there all day and, and then, you know, mm-hmm. and takes on the stormy weather or the hot weather. And uh, I like that a lot. So, um, be the tree, everyone. Be the tree. Ah, I love that. Be the tree. All right, Sako. Yeah. Well, thank you for coming on today. Thank you. It was a pleasure. Yeah, it was a pleasure to speaking with you. And I want to thank everyone for listening today. And how did you like the live consultation interview setup? It's a little bit different. Send me an email at lisa at miokpodcast.com. I'd love to hear from you. And remember to subscribe, rate, and review my podcast if you haven't done so yet. And this is Lisa Lewis signing off. Until next time. Thank you for listening today at Am I OK Podcast. If you are loving the show, please rate, review, and subscribe to it on your favorite podcast platform. Also, if you would like to learn how to manage situations as a highly sensitive person, discover your unique gift as a highly sensitive person, and learn how to be comfortable in your own skin, I offer a free eight-week email course called Highly Sensitive People. Just go to amiokpodcast.com to sign up.
In addition, I love hearing from my listeners. Drop me an email to let me know what is on your mind. You can reach me at lisa at miokpodcast.com. This podcast is designed to provide accurate and authoritative information in regards to the subject matter covered. It is given with the understanding that neither the host, the publisher, or the guest are rendering legal, accounting, clinical, or any other professional information. If you want a professional, you should find one.